Saint Padre Pio. Francisco was born in the southern Italian region of Campania. His parents were peasant farmers. He was looking after the small flock of sheep the family owned. His family was deeply religious. They attended mass daily, prayed the rosary nightly, and abstained from meat three days a week in honor of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Although his parents and grandparents were illiterate, they narrated Bible stories to their children. As a youth, Francisco reported that he had experienced heavenly visions and ecstasies. He took the Franciscan habit and the name of Pio in honor of Pope Pius I and he took the simple vows of poverty, chastity and obedience. At 17 he fell ill complaining of loss of appetite, insomnia, exhaustion, fainting spells and migraines. He vomited frequently and could digest only milk and cheese. In 1910, Pio was subsequently ordained a priest. His mass would often last hours as the mystic received visions and experienced sufferings. He compared weekly confessions to dusting a room weekly. He recommended the performance of meditation and self-examination twice daily. Once in the morning as preparation to face the day and once again in the evening as a prospection. His advice on practical application of theology he often summed up in his famous quote pray hope and don't worry. He directed Christians to recognize God in all things and to desire above all things to do the will of God. Many people who heard of him traveled to meet him and confess to him, ask for help or to have their curiosity satisfied. Those close to him attest that he began to manifest several spiritual gifts including the gifts of healing by location, levitation, prophecy, miracles, extraordinary absence from both sleep and nourishment for at least 20 days, the ability to read hearts, the gift of tongues, the gift of conversions and pleasant smelling wounds. Padre Pio increasingly became well known. He became a spiritual director and developed five rules for spiritual growth. Weekly confession, daily communion, spiritual reading, meditation and examination of conscience. The Vatican initially imposed severe sanctions on Pio in the 1920s to reduce publicity about him. It forbade him from saying mass in public, blessing people, answering letters, showing his stigmata publicly and communicating with his spiritual director. The Holy See made statements denying that the events in Pio's life were due to any divine cause. They conducted a medical examination of for the Pio's wounds in 1919 and concluded that it was a skin necrosis. The Bishop of Volterra, Raffaele Rossi, a Carmelite, was formally commissioned on 11th June 1921 by the Holy Office to make a canonical inquiry concerning Father Pio. Rossi began his apostolic visitation on 14th June in San Giovanni Rotondo with the interrogation of witnesses two diocesan priests and seven friars after 8 days of investigation 
he finally completed a benevolent report which he sent to the Holy Office on 4th October 1921, the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. Whatever is extraordinary about what Father Pio does, that cannot be explained, but certainly not by the intervention of the devil or by deception or dizziness. During the interviews with the witnesses, which Rosie undertook, a total of three times he let himself be shown the stigmata of the then 34-year-old Father Pio, Rosie saw these stigmata as a real fact. Pio was said to have had the gift of reading souls, the ability to bilocate among other supernatural phenomena. He was said to communicate with angels and worked favors and healings before they were requested of him. The reports of supernatural phenomena surrounding Padre Pio attracted fame and legend. The Vatican was initially skeptical. Based on Pio's correspondence, he experienced less obvious indication of the visible stigmata. Bodily marks, pain and bleeding in locations supposedly corresponding to the crucifixion wounds of Jesus Christ. In a 1911 letter, he wrote to his spiritual advisor, Padre Benedetto, describing about experiencing pain in the middle of the palms of his hands, in the middle of the left hand, and also under his feet, he could feel some pain. He experienced stigmata for 50 years until the end of his life. The blood flowing from the stigmata purportedly smelled of perfume or flowers. He also said that he was suffering the pain of the crown of thorns and the scourging. He had been suffering from them at least once weekly for some years. By 1933, the tide began to turn. Pope Pius XI ordered a reversal of the ban on Padre Pio's public celebration of Mass and hearing confessions. He was also given honorary permission to preach despite never having taken the exam or preaching license. Pope Pius XII, who assumed the papacy in 1939, even encouraged devotees to visit Padre Pio. Finally, in the mid-1960s, Pope Paul VI dismissed all accusations against Padre Pio. The day after the 50th anniversary of his receiving the stigmata, Padre Pio felt great fatigue. As was customary, he had his rosary in his hands, though he did not have the strength to say Hail Mary's aloud. Till the end, he repeated the words, Jesu Maria. With his last breath, he whispered, Maria.